Hello. Let me make sure the chat is working because it's been a little annoying recently. Is the Wi-Fi working? What's going on? Let me make sure we're connected to the ethernets. Perfect. You are. There we go. Now it's working. Uh, I need to wash my hair. It is very, very greasy and it feels very gross. But let me wait for everyone to show up here. Oh, a dispensary parking lot. Hi. Today we're talking about Burning Man. If you don't know, now you know. I'll give people a few moments. This is how I feel at the beginning of class every day. I'll wait. I will wait. I will wait. And also, I ordered the new computer. I ordered it. I ordered it. Uh, it's not going to be here for a little bit, though. So that's a little bit annoying. Whatever. Said it'll be here in two to three weeks. And I think it's going to take longer because, so my friend from my old job, he used to be an Apple genius. So I texted him and I was like, please help me. And I made sure that I got like the right amount of like RAM and storage and all that stuff to do what we need to do. So that is why it's taking longer. I think because I got like the upgraded RAM or whatever that like when I selected that the shipping time increased a lot. I don't know. Maybe they still have as many of those. <clears throat> Lorica69, thanks for subscribing. We have a lot of slides today. I'm really excited. Y'all are going to be into this. I can tell. I can feel it in my bones. You know? You know? Uh, I feel like all I do now, though this is the one thing I will say, when I was in corporate America, like, I would work on my slides, and that's the only time I was on Nearpod. I think if you looked at my screen time, it would be like six hours a day on Nearpod because I do every single one of my PowerPoints for my students on Nearpod and I teach two separate curriculums. So I make 11 Nearpods a week. So that's why we are like, oh, how long does this take you? I'm very fast because I make 11 Nearpods a week from scratch. <laughs> Actually, that's a lie, not from scratch. Uh, for the kids, a lot of times I'll get slides. Look at this giant knot in my hair. For the kids stuff, a lot of times I get slides on Teachers Pay Teachers or I just like have them because now I'm at the point in history where we're learning stuff that I've taught before. So I have slides, which is so nice. It's so nice to not have to make stuff because like, okay, this is my problem is like my admin and my mentor and stuff. They're like, oh my gosh, it's so tedious to make stuff. Just use this one. But like I have standards, sorry. So like that little... And I don't have standards about like it needs to look cute. Like my slides are literally just like white text or black text on a white background. Like there's nothing cute about them. But like it, the order needs to make sense and it needs to fully explain everything. I feel like so many PowerPoints that they give me, it's literally just like a list of names or something like that. And I'm like, that doesn't explain anything. Like it needs to, I, like I want it to have a story arc, you know? Like I want there to be like a beginning, a middle and an end. And that's why they be remembering stuff with me. I swear to God, it really is. Ugh, I don't like my hair. And tomorrow's picture day. Whatever. Okay. Welcome to therapy. If you're just now joining us, this is going to fix all your problems. Also, for anyone that doesn't know, I want to lean back, but I don't want to like fall. Merch is here. Say no to drugs. Say yes to history. This is probably my favorite piece of merch. This is also the top selling merch. Uh, the link is in that image and you can scan that QR code, live, laugh, love. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this freaking party started. Welcome to therapy. Love free therapy. Um, disclaimer, I'm not a licensed therapist. I am just here. That's it. Also, for those of you on TikTok, mwah, 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 uh, come to Twitch. That's where you can see the pictures. That's where you can see the videos. The chat over there is giving a lot harder than y'all. I'm sorry to say it, but they really just are. Um... I look good. Thank you. So I just, this is actually, I promise this is my last ow, story and then I'll start talking about this. So I have been in like a little bit of a funk recently and I figured out what it was. So because I was unemployed all summer, I was Pelotoning all the time. So now the Peloton is not scratching the itch it used to because like I like to work out for my mental health. I just like to be sweating and get my ass kicked first thing in the morning and then it's like only up from there. You know what I mean? And so I realized the reason I've been a little stressy and depressed is because 
I, even though I've been Pelotoning, it hasn't had the effect it usually does on me because all summer I was doing it for like an hour or two a day. So like those muscles are just really strong. So this week I started a new workout thing and I like feel so much better. Um, so I, and it's sad cause I love the Peloton and I could just increase the resistance, but I feel like it's, it's just like not scratching the itch anymore. So I'm still Pelotoning a couple days a week. So today I did the new one. I'm doing like every other day. So I don't know. I started the insanity workouts. If you know what that is, um, they're hard as shit. I'm super sore. And like, so the first day I did it, I couldn't even finish it. Like I literally was on the ground, like breathing and like sweating and like could not get up. It's so hard. And it felt good because I was like, wow, I have not had a workout kick my ass in a while because I've been Pelotoning for like a year and a half. So it's like, I still sweat and it gets my heart rate up a little bit, but it's not like, you know, but anyway, let's talk about Burning Man. I'm sure lots of Burning Man attendees have Pelotons as well. So, oh my God, why did my computer just do that? So for anyone that has never heard of this, if you've never heard of Burning Man, tonight is going to be like even more stellar. Like you're going to love tonight even more if you have never heard of this. If you have heard of it, you'll still love it. But if you've never heard of this, we're about to blow your fucking mind, just so you know. So Burning Man is a week long, large scale desert event. It is focused on community, art, self-expression and self-reliance. Big misconception, it is not a music festival. People play music there, but there's no like plan. Like there's no acts. They don't hire anyone. It just happens like just some people that like to play music will play music with their people there. Like it's a musical event in the sense that there is music, but it is not a music festival where you have headliners and a set list and all of that stuff. It is nothing of the sort. Um, the event's name comes from the culminating ceremony. They symbolically burn a large effigy referred to as the man that occurs the Saturday before Labor Day. It's adult summer camp, basically. And they, uh, they also like people will like, then they burn the man. You're supposed to be like burning your regrets. And it's like to symbolize like starting anew. So I know that a lot of people have gone to this. Um, what's her name? Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos. She, remember if you were here when we talked about her, she went to Burning Man and like wrote down her regrets on a paper and you like pin it to the man. And then like you're, you, you know, people be doing stuff like that. So it's like a very like, free to be you and me type of place. This is the picture of it, um, which is fascinating to me. I love an aerial photo. Can I just say I love, 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 love an aerial photo. And I love, I love city planning. So like from a city planning perspective, I'm really into this photo because like, look at that. Look at the arch, look at the nice little roadways. Like, ah, oh, love a city plan. Looks so organized. So since 1991, the event has been held in Nevada, but according to the co-founder, um, it is older than that. So do, 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 where was I? According to Burning Man co-founder Larry Harvey in 2004, the event is guided by 10 stated principles, radical inclusion, gifting, decommodification, which is like D money, like commodities are like money and frivolous and you buy, you know, radical self-reliance, radical self-expression, communal effort, civic responsibility, leaving no trace, participation and immediacy. I don't really understand what immediacy is, but whatever. I mean, like, I know it means immediately, but I don't see how that fits into this is what I'm saying. So at Burning Man, there's no headliners or scheduled performers, like I already said. Instead, the participants design and build art activities and events. Artwork includes experimental and interactive sculptures, buildings, performances, art cars, and other media. Like one of my friends that does Burning Man, she like hosted like a meditation thing. And like you go, you tell people when it is, they come, like it's literally adult summer camp. Like people just do stuff. Like people just do whatever. Like there's yoga classes, there's DJs, there's meditation, there's orgies. Like there's just like everything that could possibly be happening is just happening. So where was I? Um, these contributions are inspired by a theme usually chosen annually by the Burning Man Project. And the event has been called a counterculture revivory and is a 
and is described by its organizers as an excuse to party in the desert. However, NPR of, of Burning Man 2019, NB, NPR said of Burning Man 2019, once considered an underground gathering for bohemians and free spirits of all stripes, Burning Man has since evolved into a destination for social media influencers, celebrities, and the Silicon Valley elite. So that's just kind of an overview of what it is. Let's get into the details. So the very, very first Burning Man, the first one, not by the time it became a thing, but the first time they burned a man, and this is in the game, was in 1986. Very, like, that they've been doing this. This is, this is season. So there's people that have been to every single Burning Man. And that's a lot of Burning Mans. So Burning Man as a bonfire ritual on the summer solstice, uh, sculptor Mari Gerberg, friend of Lee Harvey's girlfriend, Janet Lohr, so Lee Harvey was the founder, held solstice bonfire gatherings on Baker Beach for several years before 1986, some of which Harvey attended. When, Gubin, when Grauberger stopped organizing it, Harvey picked up the torch with his permission and ran with it. So that's when it became like named, I guess. So he and Jerry James built the first wooden effigy on June 21st, 1986 cobbled together with scrap wood to be torched on that evening on june 22nd <clears throat> sorry harvey james and a few friends met on baker beach in san francisco and burned an eight foot tall wooden man and a smaller wooden dog harvey later described the inspiration of burning these effigies as a spontaneous act of radical self-expression which i guess is code for we just be doing whatever um, and then in 1987, they built the man to be 15 feet tall. And by 1988, he was 30 feet tall. So really quickly, he started getting quite tall. Um, by 1988, Harvey formally named the summer solstice a burning man by titling flyers for the happening as such. This was apparently done to ward off references to Wicker Man, the reputed Celtic pagan practice of burning live sacrifices in human-shaped wicker cages. Ooh. Um, Harvey said he had not seen the 1973 cult, The Wicker Man, until many years later, and that did not inspire the action. Oh, it's a movie. Or is it a real thing? I don't know. That's tough. But anyway... Here's the first Burning Man poster um, from 1988, possibly the first documented item where the event is named Burning Man. The poster was used to announce the event on Baker Beach, similar to the 1987 flyer. This poster uses a quote from the poem, The Forces That Through Green Fuse Drives the Flower by Dylan Thomas. So this is some of like the OG marketing. OMG, I'm the same age as the FG. <laughs> so <coughs> the first Burning Man, this is from an interview with the founders who is supremely romantic. And so two years later, having the thought of this morning and night for a couple of years, I woke up and it was the solstice and I thought, I'm tired of this. So I called up a friend and said, let's, let's burn a man, Jerry. You are not going to tell me this was a sober decision. There's no way that just soberly you decided to build a, no, you're, no. In San Francisco, in the 80s, Okay. <laughs> the he and then he asked me to repeat the statement. So we went over and we made a man out of scrap lumber in a basement in No Valley. It looked big to us. It was two feet taller than we were. And then we hauled it. We called a couple friends and there was about 12 of us. We hauled it down to the beach, soaked it with gasoline because we didn't know any better at the time. And because and because as you know, we use diesel now. Gasoline's very volatile and it flamed up. It was like a second sun brought us down. <laughs> These idiots, what are you doing? It's like a second sun brought down to this earth. It was just, it transfixed us, but that's where the story begins, in fact. Like, yeah, me and my friends, we just built this man, took him to the beach, doused him in gasoline and burned him, man. Like, what are you talking about? This is exactly what I expect some dudes in the 80s in San Francisco to be up to. This is exactly it. Because at the moment it was lit, everybody on that beach, north and south, came running. Probably because they thought it was like a natural disaster. Because you soaked it in gasoline. <laughs> that beach was a little like a form of our own city now. <laughs> These people are on drugs. With its two embracing arms around the void of the playa here. And suddenly our numbers tripled. I looked out at this arc of firelit faces. And before I knew it, I looked over... 
and there was a hippie with his pants on his head and a guitar standing there, materialized out of the murk. He started to sing a song about fire. Now, I'm not exactly a hootenanny kind of guy, but it seemed like the thing to do, and we started singing. Next thing we knew, a woman impetuously ran at the figure, and we had the urge to stop her, but it was too late. The wind was shut shunting all the flames to one side so she ran up to him and she took him by the hand and stood there i think jerry has a still has a souvenir photo and you see a little hand down in the corner of it holding his hand please tell me it was we didn't start <laughs> something tells me that they didn't have a permit not a permit in sight i don't think there is a single permit anywhere in the vicinity of the 1986 burning man festival that was the first spontaneous performance. That was the first. The first geometric increase of Burning Man. What we had instantly created was a community. And you know, if we had done it as an art event, people would have come to the gallery or something and said, it's very interesting, perhaps a little derivative. What are you going to do next? So literally some guys lit a fire and people showed up and were like, hey, you have a fire. And then some people sang. That's the whole thing. That's, that's the whole, whole thing. This is the first Burning Man on Baker Beach. The very first Burning Man in 1986. This is why I love stream, because we don't get this kind of photographic evidence from history. You know what I mean? Like, when we're talking about the Civil War, we have, like, 12 pictures, practically. Like, there's not photos of every single event. That's oddly pretentious, but also not. <laughs> A man's confidence is impeccable. It's like, it, it, you're right, because pretentious isn't the word. I'm just confused. Like, okay, awesome, happy for you, like, period. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So, 1987, they had their second year at Baker Beach. This is when they had 80 people, and that's when the man became 15 feet tall. At this point, the tickets were still free so they didn't even have tickets it was just they were doing this and if you wanted to be there you could be there i don't even think that counts as an event it's just people that's just what human life is so this is in the game too originally it was a free to go that is their origin is it was just a thing people did and it was free there was a burning man wannabe last weekend not far from where i lived I ended up a bunch of drunk high rednecks and you didn't invite me what is this event i'm intrigued me when I was, me when I set a 15 foot tall wooden man on fire to avoid being derivative. <sighs> okay, so this is Burning Man 1988. This is still on Baker Beach. The video is very low quality, but we shall watch it. Sorry, my computer sounds like it's taking off. Um, again, that new computer is going to be here soon. The, from the Burning Man archives, because that's a thing. Oh, Burning Man has regionals. I didn't know that. Mini burns, if you will, like a TEDx. Looks like Cloverfield footage. And for those of you on TikTok, you have to come to Twitch to see the video. Sorry, friends. <clears throat> Oh, did they drop him? That really is beautiful, though, San Francisco. San Francisco's gorgeous. I love San Francisco. How long is this? Oh, it's only three minutes. We'll watch the whole thing. If you told me this was footage of Waco, I'd believe you. <laughs> I'm scared. Yes, this is being recorded. All of them go on YouTube. It is a little culty. Light him on fire. Light him on fire. Yes. Good choice for an October stream. That man is burning. My foot is asleep. I hate that for me. 
hate, hate, hate that for me. Have they ever named the man or are they too scared of getting attached? Do you think this is the inspo for the 13 foot skeleton from Home Depot? I want the 13 foot skeleton for my classroom so bad because I have really, really high ceilings because I'm on the top floor of the school, but I got the five foot one. So yes, there is a mic in my classroom now as well. I have two of the same exact one. Um, new mic does not have a name yet. I have a Google form and the kids are gonna submit the name and then I'll take a vote. You have the 13 foot skeleton? You just set up your drum, you have nothing to do with the oh, Hold on, we need to hear this. Yuri, are we here banging the drum? You must be in charge of it, right? And let me see some identification. Oh, are the cops here? Put your stuff down on the ground. What kind of group is this? I'm just playing the drum, man. You just, you just set up your drum, you have nothing to do with the fire. Come on, what did you think I was going yesterday or this morning? Not the police. His name is Mike. About the whole deal here, yeah. I just heard there was a party out here called Summer Solstice. So Mike brought his drums and you guys just hanging out, right? It's like this. We'll talk about the people getting burned. Yeah, I'm just playing my gong. Okay. <laughs> what kind of group is this? They don't know, dog. I genuinely believe this guy where he's like, I'm literally just playing my drum. Like, I, <laughs> that's what this is. They're literally just people. The police, like, can't compute it. They're like, what's your name? <laughs> is there a giant burning man behind me? That is crazy. That was not there yesterday. Bill. Bill. When do you get your new computer? Between October 20th and 30th, whenever the Apple gods decide to deliver it. So 1989 was the last burn on the beach because obviously the local authorities did not love this. Um, and by this point, they had 300 people. The Burning Man was 40 feet tall and tickets are still free. Um, so this is their little poster. There's some pictures of the final Burning Man on the beach. So here's from their website. I love their website, just so you can see how the man grew. So 1986, he's eight feet tall, it's 20 people. By 1990, they're already at 350 people and a 40 foot tall man, which is crazy. 1989, coincidence, I think not. How does T-Swift have something to do with everything? Did you raise enough for your computer? Yes, yes, I did. So 1990, Zone Trip 4 and the Black Rock Desert. So this is when they move from the beach to the desert. So in 1990, a separate event was planned by Kevin Evans and John Law on a remote, largely unknown playa known as the Black Rock Desert, about 110 miles north of Reno, Nevada. Evans considered it as a diadis temporary autonomous zone with sculptures to be burned and situationist performance art. He asked John Law, who also had experience on a dry lake and was the defining founder of Cacopanese Society, which is what they called the organization that was running Burning Man when it was at the beach. Sorry, I accidentally skipped that. Um, and it was announced that... Do, 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 do. Hold on. He asked John Law, the Burning Man guy, to take on this project because he had organized so many other events. And in their society's newsletter, it was announced as Zone Trip Number 4, A Bad Day at Black Rock, inspired by some movie, apparently. Meanwhile, the solstice burn at Baker Beach was interrupted by the park police for not having a permit. Like we saw, the police were starting to get wind of this. After striking a deal to raise the man but not burn it, event organizers disassembled it and returned it to the vacant lot where it had been built. Shortly thereafter, the legs and torso of the man were chainsawed and the pieces were removed when the space was unexpectedly leased as a parking, parking lot. The man was reconstructed, led by Dan Miller, Harvey's then housemate, just in time to take it to zone trip number four. So this is how they moved from the beach to the desert because they had been doing it on the beach. Then they started working with these people on this desert project and then their beach thing got fucked up. So they took the man to the desert project. And though that's how the events just kind of like merged into one. I know that's like confusing as shit, but that's what happened. Hope that that made sense. Also, it really doesn't matter that much because we're mainly just here to talk about the mud. But anyway, I want to show you some footage of the 1995 Burning Man. So give me one second to pull it up. And I'm excited once the new computer gets here to do more stuff like this. So this is from 
like literal film, I think. Burning Man, 1995. We're not gonna watch the whole thing, it's eight minutes. I haven't watched this, by the way. I have no idea what's in this. Well, it doesn't have noise. That's cool, I guess. Is this just like someone's vlog? I think this literally is someone's vlog. Okay, we get it. Oh, we're still driving? A full minute in and we're still driving. Literally, okay, the, you would never make it on TikTok. You've already lost my attention. Okay, now they're out to the desert, just so you can see the vibes. Okay, boom, they're in the desert. Looks like they're early, some of the first ones there. There's some people selling little figurines, people in the desert, you can see the little cars. I feel like this time, it was probably the vibes. You know, everyone was probably really nice and it was still free at this point, I think. People are naked, walking around the desert. Who the hell cares? Who the hell cares? You would never make it. <laughs> I was kind of being shady, but I was mainly joking. Okay, so that's some footage of the 1995 Burning Man, just so you can see the vibes of the early days. Um, Michael Mickle, which like, fuck your parents for that. That is so dirty. If your last name is Mickle, don't name your kid Michael. What are you, like, what are you talking, no, what's wrong with you? Um, he realized that the participants were unfamiliar with the environment of a dry lake and they would benefit from knowledgeable persons to ensure they did not get lost deep in the dry lake and risk dehydration and death because it's literally a dried up lake out in the desert. So there's not like anywhere you can drink water, go to the bathroom, anything like that. Um, he took the name Danger Ranger and created the Black Rock Rangers to assist them. Thus, Black Rock City began as a fellowship organized by law and Mickle based on the founders' ideas along with Harvey and James' symbolic man. Drawing on experience in the sign business and with light sculpture, Law prepared custom neon tubes for the man starting in 1991 so he could be seen as a beacon to aid navigation at night long before they were like planning where roads were and stuff like that. So they started lighting up the man so everyone could see because again, they're in the middle of the desert. In its early years, the community grew by word of mouth alone and all were considered participants under the contribution of the Kakanismus situationist vibe. There were no paid or scheduled scheduled performers or artists, no separation between art and life, nor art space and living space, no rules other than don't under, don't interfere with anyone's immediate experience and no guns in the central camp. Feels reasonable to me. Feels reasonable to me. Very, very reasonable. I feel like Mickle can definitely be pronounced Michael. I think his name is Michael Michael. I'm hoping it's not. Um, 1991 marked the first year that the event had a legal permit. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> it started in 1986 and there wasn't a permit until 1991 when you already had hundreds of people. And this was through the BLM, not Black Lives Matter, but the Bureau of Land Management. If y'all have seen White Lotus, they have a joke about that, like BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Um, this was also the year that the art model and fire dancer, later Burning Man's first art director, Crimson Rose, attended the event and saw the birth of a smaller, intensive nearby event named Desert Sight Works, which was uh, conceived and directed by somebody else that went on for two years. So I guess they had a fucking competition in the desert. There were 20 participants in the first year, 100 in the second and third year, and the annual several weeks long event. Oh, that's about that uh, other person's event. I don't give a shit about that. So the man keeps growing. Look, he keeps getting taller. 1991, he was 40 feet. That's when they started putting lights on him. And by 2000, he was already 54 feet tall. 54 feet. So here's some pictures from like old OG Burning Man days. So you can see people have RVs. There's the man. A lot of people brought kids, which is weird to me. Um, they're out in the desert. I don't really know what's going on with that. More people out in the desert. You can literally see they're just in the middle of nowhere. There is not a sign of life anywhere. These are people raising the man for the first time in the desert. I'm told that the majority of people who were there are in the picture. So this is like the mainly the first crowd of the Burning Man people. Um, I've talked with the Burning Man organizers and let me tell you, they definitely give no permit vibes. Um, here's again, some more of their posters and their advertising. It's a miracle they got anyone to come to this. Like, there's literally like 12 people there at first. Like, what did they do for water? Where did they go to the bathroom? I have so many questions. <clears throat> 
Look closely, you can see how tall you get when you eat your vegetables. Here's people in a nearby town. Apparently the nearby towns hate this. I can imagine so. I'm sure this is terrible. I just realized one of my lashes fell off and I forgot to put a new one on. That sucks. Here's some people dancing in the fire during the opera. I don't really know. This is very much a hippie vibe. The alien and his mistress dance on the catwalk during the Burning Man fashion show of a Saturday afternoon, August 30th, 1997. Incredible. Um, this is someone who brought a bunch of bicycles. The bikes are very important, just FYI. So some of the bikes are art and some of the bikes are meant to be ridden. Interesting. I've been to a hot spring out past the playa. It's absolutely in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. And then this is an art piece. I'm hoping slash assuming those skulls are fake. Here is again the wooden man statue in 1999. Here's again some big like installation art or they're covering where they're sleeping. Again, like the art and the living, it's all one thing. It's not like the art's over here and the tents are over here. It's like this is all just one big giant thing. Um, this is a horse mobile sculpture. I love everything about this. I'm assuming that that is a fake horse. Again, hoping and assuming that that is a fake horse. Um, here is the man again. You can see people play the saxophone. People got their trucks here. People covering their face in sand and makeup. Again, you're in the middle of the desert. How are you going to wash that off? You're just going to leave that on for the next three days? Like, it's really not adding up to me. Walks with Dragons, thanks for subscribing. How did they get it there? I a trailer, I would assume. Um, and then again, more Burning Man fashion show. Alyssa Sears and Jake Dunn of San Francisco hold each other while exploring the center of Black Rock City, Burning Man 1999. Incredible. More art, and then there is the man burning. This really does look culty. Like, it really, really does. I would not survive this. Me either. My skin would be so dry. It would be done. I would be so done. I have a sneeze, and I, like, feel it, but it's not happening. So here's some more pics. This is trash and debris that they left in 1997. Now they're very anti-trash, but apparently they were not always. Um, here is some people chilling under this water spouting tree. So I guess this is where they're getting the water. What's the one group with the giant owl sculpture in the woods? What? They use acidic shower to neutralize the alkaline, alkaline sand, lemon juice, or vinegar showers. I am not built for this. I'm so glad I've never been to this. I almost went one time. I was in a really dark place. I think anyone going to Burning Man is inherently in a very dark place in some way or another. Um, I'm glad I did not go. I'm glad I did not go. I think people go to Burning Man because they know they need to be humbled. Like, you know that they, that you know that they need to be like brought back down to reality. Bohemian Grove. Oh, I've never heard of this. Interesting. So here is more bikes and life jackets, whatever the fuck that means. There's no water around. Here's the man with the neon lights on him. That seems super safe to light that on fire. They have all these cool tents. More of the man. This is a couple getting married under the man at the Burning Man Festival. So that's fun. To get married at Burning Man is not weird at all. Some people playing music. I mainly just wanted you to see the vibes. Chris Campbell, the carpenter who builds the Burning Man every year, wires some neon sculptures in 1998, preparing for the unveiling in San Francisco on Friday. The Burning Man will then be taken to the Nevada desert for the annual event on Labor Day weekend. Um, and then in 1998, they also had wet weather. This hampered the organizers of Burning Man to clean up the playa. The rain made the playa almost impassable and the work due to be completed by September 15th. And apparently they had to ask for an extension. So... Sculpture made of bones from cattle remains. Someone wearing a space suit. It's really just people doing what the hell ever. It's just people having a grand old time and doing whatever. This is cool. It's called Stallion Ranch, and it's like a brothel parody that's staffed by men. So, like, it's literally just people being creative, people doing their thing. These people are leading a yoga class. Um, by 1999, they had 20,000 people, which is insane. Um, 1998, here is artwork made of plastic, or of recycled plastic, artsy fartsy people. So 1997 marked another pivotal year for the event. It had been moved because of the permit for BlackRock was denied for 1997, and a team conducting land speed trials had a conflicting permit that took precedence. 
Fly Ranch is a smaller adjoining dry lake bed just west was chosen as the alternate location. This moved Burning Man from Pershing County slash um, Federal Land Bureau of Land Management land into the county, which had a very long list of permit requirements. So to comply with the new requirements, they turned into an LLC under Dana Harrison. Um, and that's how they started to build the city that required a grid layout. They had to have emergency vehicles. They had to have an address. So this is how they started to get like more organized and things was because they got forced to by this county. Garrett continued as the city designer until he died in 2011 RIP at age 76. He's also credited with the all of the um, man bases from 2001 to 2012, the Center Camp Cafe and the first camp. 1998 they went back to Black Rock but not deep not to deep to the deep playa along a temporary perimeter fence um, and the event there has remained ever since so they've moved around a couple times as the population grew the bureau of land management started giving them more restrictions and they had to make changes into how people were invited to the event and now they had online ticket sales so more rules started getting established critics of the event cite uh these rules as impinging on original freedoms and principles so the ogs are mad because they're like hey man this is supposed to be a cool vibe where we can all do what we want fuck out of here with your rules um but you have a, a fuck ton of people there so the federal government is gonna have rules so they had to have a grid street structure a speed limit of five miles an hour and they had a ban on driving except for the mutant vehicles which we'll look at and then service vehicles so you can't just like drive your car there there's like separate places for parking i guess um they have burning of any art must be done on an approved burn platform so they do the burning man but you cannot just like light shit on fire there's no fireworks allowed and no animals allowed this seems reasonable as hell to me like i literally cannot think of a more reasonable rule list another well notable uh, another notable restriction is the 9.2 mile temporary plastic fence that surrounds the event so it's just to show like what part of the land is actually burning man it's only four feet tall. It's not even really to keep anyone out. It's more to keep trash in because as the wind blows, trash blows. So the fence catches most of it, I guess. Um, so yeah, wind blown debris. And then since 2002, the area beyond this fence has not been accessible to Burning Man participants during the event. So now like you're in that little area and you're not supposed to leave. And I think it's just kind of like a trust system. I'm sure that people have gotten out before. Um, one visitor who accidentally who was accidentally burned at the 2005 event tried to sue Black Rock City LLC in San Francisco and the court ruled that they cannot do that. So the first district upheld the trial court's grants summary judgment on the basis that people who deliberately walk towards the man after ignited assume the risk of getting burned by such a hazardous object. And I just want to say that is exactly my political views people who walk toward the man after it's ignited assume the risk of getting burned you should not be able to sue for that that is such a fucking waste of everyone's time i cannot believe that they were able to sue for that like you walked into flames and now you're gonna sue no one made you do that no one made you do that no one made you do that like it's big enough you see it it's a big ass fire. Even like toddlers have like the instinct to not go in that because it's hot. I love the inspirational poster style of this image. Thank you. I made this on Canva and that is the burning man in the background. <laughs> oh. So burning man attendee died after running into the flames. This was in 2017 though. So this guy was 41 and he ran into the flames at burning man and he passed away. He broke through two levels of security guards protecting the area where the man was burning on Saturday night. Fire personnel attempted to pull him out, but falling portions of the burning structure hindered their efforts. Rescuers had to wait until the structure fell before they could go into the flames and safely extract him from the debris. Um, he was taken to the UC, uh, UC Davis Medical Center in Sacramento and was pronounced dead at the hospital. So there have been multiple people that have run into the literal flames of Burning Man. Incredible. Incredible. Because why did you do that? Why would you ever do that? 
So here is the trash fence. Somehow that got out of order. But yes, this is their little trash fence. You can see, like, you can easily get out of that if you want to, but you're not supposed to. So I guess if you go out, they don't let you back in, I guess is probably the punishment. But I feel like it'd be pretty easy to get back in, too. You know what I mean? So dust storms are very, very common at Burning Man. So people wear goggles and masks to reduce dust inhalation. And people will, like, tie bandanas over their face and things like that. Why are y'all going out here? Like, there's a reason that historically humans have not settled in areas like this. Like, if you look back to, like, caveman nomadic times, like, thousands of years ago, humans don't hang out there because it's, like, literally no life. Like, there's no water. Like, it's such an inhospitable environment. I don't understand it. So... They have their 10 principles. Hey, babe, do you want to recreate my special interest, the dust bowl with me? No, literally. I have asthma. I literally can't go. No, thanks. That's terrifying. Apparently, my friends who have gone have told me sometimes the dust is so bad you can't see your hand in front of your face. Who's signing up for this? That is like a literal torture chamber. White people will purposely inhale dust and stand instead of just going to therapy. So because of the variety of goals fostered by the pretend, by the attendees known as burners, Burning Man does not have a single focus. The features of the event, like we said, are artwork, absurdity, decommodification, and participation is encouraged. They want people not to just be there to watch stuff. They want them to be involved in stuff, which is my personal fucking nightmare. I hate participating. Um, the Burning Man and the affiliate communities are guided by 10 principles, so we kind of already talked about this, but radical inclusion, gifting, decommodification, radical self-reliance, radical self-expression, communal effort, civic responsibility, leaving no trace, participation, and immediacy. This is such a, com like, what's that saying? A camel is a horse built by a committee. This is such committee behavior. This is so many principles, 10, 10. They do not follow a single one of these. Exactly, like self-reliance and communal effort. Like it, it's just so evident that this was literally just like made up as they went. <laughs> like the roots of it just being like, let's build a man and light him on fire. That vibe just continued out through the entire thing. So the descriptions and quotes are the actual text from their fucking rule book, I guess. So anyone may be a part of Burning Man. We welcome and respect the stranger. No prerequisites exist for participation in our community. This was written with a broad stroke for general organizing, meaning anyone is welcome to the Burning Man culture. Prerequisites for the Burning Man event are participants are expected to provide their own basic needs, follow the general, follow guidelines in the annually updated survival guide, and purchase a $475 ticket to get in. They're like radical inclusion starting at $475. Who's in? So, Burning Man is devoted to acts of gift giving. The value of a gift is unconditional. Gifting does not contemplate a return, a return or an exchange for something of equal value. Instead of cash, burners are, are encouraged to rely on a gift economy, a sort of potlatch. In the earliest days of the event, an underground bar barter economy also existed in which burners exchanged favors with each other. While this was originally supported by the Burning Man organization, it is now largely discouraged. I'll let you pick up what I'm putting down with favors that is now discouraged. I got this bug bite on my arm and it just like won't go away. Um, instead, burners are encouraged to give each other gifts unconditionally. So you're not expect, you're not supposed to expect head for giving someone like a bottle of water is I think what they're trying to get at. So decommodification. This one really fucking gets me. To preserve the spirit of gifting, our community seeks to create social environments that are unmediated by commercial sponsorships, transactions, or advertising. We stand ready to protect our culture from such exploitation. We resist the substitution of consumption for participatory experience. What does that mean? We resist the substitution of consumption for participatory experience. 
So cash can only be used for a select few charity fuel and sanitation vendors as following. So cafe beverages such as coffee, chai, and lemonade, which are sold at the Center Camp Cafe, which is or operated by the organizers of the event, they cited cost, decreased need, environmental impact, and decommodification. Beverage sales were actually halted in 2022. So for a while they had a little cafe, but then they were like, no man, that doesn't go against, or that goes against our principles. So they sell ice, but the ice sales go to the local school system. So that's great, I guess. Someone take away their thesaur thesaurus. No, that is the perfect description. I'm throwing the thesaurus away. Um, tickets for the shuttle bus to the nearest communities, Gerlach and Empire, are operated by a contractor that does not participate in the event, known as Green Tortoise. So they have re-entry wristbands, which allows a person to leave and re-enter at the event. Those can be purchased at the gate upon exit. An airport use fee, because they do have a little airport that they set up there. I guess they just land the planes in the sand. So they have to pay a fee to use that little airport. Diesel and biodiesel, which are sold by third-party contractors. RV dump service and Camp Greywater disposal service. And private portable toilets and servicing, which can be arranged with the official contractor. So it seems like we're decommodifying unless we want it. If you want it, we can have it. But other than that, we're gonna decommodify. Let me find a picture of the airport. Burning Man Airport. Yep, it is exactly what I thought it would be. Stop doing the little rainbow wheel. It's exactly what it looks like. They put some stuff in the ground. They draw out a little runway, I guess. That's what the airport is. Airport fee is the most commodifying thing I've ever heard. It really is. Do you think they have to clean out the portable potty when they're done or does the company clean it out? It said service. Where was it? Private portable portable toilets and servicing. So I would imagine the company does it if they have servicing. I think most most of the times if you rent a porta potty, they do that, I think. So other principles, radical self-reliance. Burning Man encourages the individuals to discover, exercise, and rely on his or her inner resources. The event's harsh environment and remote location require participants to be responsible for their substance. Since the LLC forbids most commerce, participants must be prepared and bring all their own supplies with the exception of the items stated in decommodification. Public portable toilets are also available throughout the city. Some of these are like art carts decorated in imaginative ways by volunteers. So I guess they do have bathrooms. So radical self-expression. Holy shit, how are these rich people able to fly their own planes there? I always thought people who went there were broke artists and hippies. Exactly. Exactly, art carts, we love a cart. So radical self-expression arises from the unique gifts of the individual. No one other, this is literally like such mom core. Um, no one other than the individual or a collaborating group can determine its content. It's offered as a gift to others. In this spirit, the giver should respect the rights and liberties of the participant. What does this mean? They're literally just saying words. Literally just saying words. Apparently the 2023 tickets were $575 and a car pass was $150. Jesus. Burners are encouraged to express themselves in a number of ways through various art forms and projects. The event is clothing optional and public nudity is common, although not practiced by the majority. And then communal efforts. Our community values creative cooperation and collaboration. We strive to produce, promote, and protect social networks, public spaces, works of art, and methods of communication that support such interaction. They literally talk so much but they say nothing like nothing is being said it's just buzzwords burners are encouraged to work with and help one another that's all that means civic responsibility i don't even know if i can make it through all this if we're being honest we value civil society community members who organize events should assume responsibility for public welfare and endeavor to communicate civic responsibilities to participants they also must assume responsibility for conducting events in accordance with local state and federal laws and then leave no trace our community respects the environment we're committed to leaving no physical trace of our activities wherever we gather we clean up after ourselves and endeavor whenever possible to leave such places in a better state than when we found them. Participation. Oh, I just realized something. Damn it. I was about to say, 
this women's group I used to be a part of would always say the same thing. We need to leave the place better than we found it because we would always meet in like rented spaces and a lot of people didn't want to rent to us because we were kind of annoying. Um, so we would always try and like leave it really clean to be like, thank you. Um, and I just realized that that is the organization where I know the Burning Man people. So they definitely just took that idea from them. Because <laughs> I'd always really liked that and it always like stuck with me. And I was like, oh, I love that. It's just from Burning Man. <laughs> That's sad. Anyway, um, our community is committed to a radically participatory ethic. Oh, it's also Girl Scouts? Okay, good. That makes me feel better. Um, we believe that transformative change, whether in the individual or in society, can only occur through a medium of deeply personal participation. We achieve being through, we achieve being through doing. What? We achieve being through doing. What does that mean? <laughs> what literally what does that mean? Everyone is invited to work. Everyone is invited to play. We make the real world through actions that operate the heart. People are encouraged to participate rather than observe. And then immediacy. This is the one I wanted to fucking hear because what does that fucking mean? Immediate experience is in many ways the most important touchstone of value in our culture. We seek to overcome barriers that stand between us and a recognition of our inner selves, the reality of those around us, and participation in society, contact with the natural world, exceeding human powers. No idea can substitute for this experience. I am more confused than I was before. Like I thought I was confused before, but now I'm definitely really, really, really confused. Does anyone get paid for working Burning Man or is it only volunteers? I think the Burner Ranger people are all volunteers, which is a lot. So Burning Man Playa Restoration 2015. Attendees carry around sticks and buckets to clean the desert of moop, which is matter out of place as a part of the leave no trace policy. So they literally make not this year, but normally they go through and make sure that they picked up everything before they left. And there's people that volunteer to do that. And the attendees do it. The man is continuing to grow by 2010. He's 104 feet tall, which is wild. And you can see he kind of gets different sizes at different times because now he's like an art piece. So the art piece looks a little different every year. And you can kind of see the outlines of what they look like on here. Why does that look AI generated? I guess it'd be fun to volunteer if you can't afford the $500 ticket. I don't know if fun is the word I would use. Okay, good, but I'd hate to clean a desert after such a mass event. Exactly, like, they could do this at not right there, you know? So, Black Rock City. I think, again, this aerial photo is, like, fucking gorgeous. I love the aerial photos of this event. Look at that. Black Rock City, often abbreviated to BRC, is the temporary city created by the Burning Man participants, and much of the general infrastructure is constructed by Department of Public Works volunteers who often reside in Black Rock City for several weeks before and after the event. So I guess some of the Burning Man like creators are also attendees, so they're volunteering to do it. So I guess the Department of Public Works is just a lot of fucking burners. I bet that's a really cool place to work. Wherever all the Burning Man people are in that department, that's where I want to be. The remainder of the city, including theme camps, villages, art installations, and individual camping are all created by the participants. So city planning, let's talk about our favorite thing. So the development part of the city is arranged in that arc, like we said, it's two thirds of, of one and a half two thirds of a 1.5 mile diameter circle. So they basically make a circle that's a mile and a half in diameter and they only take up two thirds of it is what has happening there. The outline of these streets are visible in aerial photographs. The missing third um, of the, like the missing chunk of the circle is used for art installations. The innermost street is named the Esplanade. The remaining streets are given names to coincide with the overall theme of the burn and ordered in ways like alphabetical or stem to stern to make them easier to recall. So for example, in 1999, their theme was Wheel of Time. And again, for the Vault of Heaven theme, the streets were named after the planets in the solar system. So like every year they name the streets differently, but they make it something that's really easy to remember. And the streets are given a clock designation. So you can put like, 
the man is at the center of the clock. So, you know, like, oh, that's six o'clock. That's 615. Like, that's how you can tell the street. So it really is like planned very well. So like when you're and a lot of people there like don't have cell phones and stuff like that because they're in the middle of nowhere. I don't think you'd have service. So people will like leave each other notes and you can write mail to each other and they have a little postage system where they deliver it. And so you can figure out where like when you're meeting people and you want to hang out and party with them, that's how you tell them where to go. So just as we were saying, like people have events, they have yoga classes, they have fashion shows. When they meet people throughout the couple days, they're like, oh, it's on 615 of this cross street or whatever so like it's a grid system kindly kind of to make it really easy to find everybody they have disaster relief charity called burners without borders and they funnel a lot of the profits so they don't have to pay taxes interesting <gasps> you really be knowing stuff it sounds so cool until you remember the lack of personal hygiene so the avenues have been in um, identified in other ways. Um, notably in 2002, the world was, or the theme was the floating world um, as the degrees of a compass. So they did it like, yeah, these are just different ways they've done it. And then the airport is constructed adjacent to the city, usually on the southern side. So here's some more aerial photos you can see, like here's the man right here in the center. And then they kind of go out from there. Or maybe that's the man right there. Anyway, there's art over here. You can see the streets. Here's another aerial photo. It really is a huge, 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 huge place. My job is Burning Man adjacent. I'm very intrigued. Here's another aerial photo. <clears throat> this is the one that I'm obsessed with. You can see the trash fence around it. And then there's like the road in. I don't know where the cars are. I guess not in frame. And then this is where they hold it. So just so you can see, Sacramento is right here. Here is the Black Rock City little Google Maps thing. There is Reno is kind of the closest big city. So it's literally in the middle of nowhere down with capitalism. But let me find my fly my private jet there. Exactly. I guess I'm just confused about what you go to Burning Man to actually do. Hang out, look at art, substances from what I've gathered is what people are doing there. It keeps reminding me of the Death Star. So before we get into the details, oh, I think I did this backwards, just a general timeline of the city planning throughout the year. So like we said, started on the beach, no organization. Then they work with the Bureau of Land Management. They have to have actual registration. The first sound camp was established and that's when they started having music as a part of the event. But again, there's no set list. Um, and then no man's land was created for a better view of the man. So this is that spot where like, there's nothing right there. And I guess that's where they all stand and hang out and look at the man burning down. Um, techno ghetto had its last year, whatever that means. Uh, yeah, we kind of already talked about a lot of this, but yeah, their city planning. So 2011 to 2018, you can see this man is still getting taller. The tallest he's ever been is 105 feet. And here's the 105 feet one. And then they did it again, but that one doesn't count because his head is not at the top. So he is not 105 feet tall. This fire is probably huge. You can see by 2018, they're up to 70,000 people, which is a lot. Last time I went to Reno, they told us if we took our rental car to Burning Man, they'll charge us a $500 fee. You know that the rental car places in Reno are fucking tired of this. You know it. You know it. So Center Camp is in the midline of Black Rock City facing 6 o'clock, which we kind of already talked about. This is a central meeting place for the city and contains that cafe that used to exist and other operations like the public radio, the recycling camp, uh, the ranger outpost, the Bureau of Land Management, the emergency people, the ICE people, all that's kind of in the center. Then there's villages and theme camps. So like all over, there's little groups of people where they all like pick a theme together. And these camps are a collective of anywhere between several to several hundred people. So a theme camp could be six people. It could be 600 people representing themselves under a unique value offering to qualify as a theme camp. They must therefore be granted placement in Black Rock City and you must apply through official Burning Man placement channels and remain in good standing to be placed for future years. So there's some Burning Man villages that have been around for like 20 years and they've been doing it for super long. Like a lot of my friends that go, they have their little villages that they go to and like they go with the kind of same groups of people every year and they kind of know what to expect. And sometimes you pay someone to be a part of their village. Like you have to buy a ticket, but you pay and they'll have like food and cooler stuff, which we'll look at. So I saw a TikTok of the lady that rented her RV and they lied about going to Burning Man. It was covered in sand on the inside and out. That is so annoying. 
So furthermore, villages exist in Black Rock City and are collections of theme camps which share common values and coordinate resources between their village of individual theme camps. So theme camps and villages, as well as open campers who are free to camp outside of placement boundaries, form and form to create an atmosphere that is collectively envisioned. So it's randos, it's big groups of people, it's little groups of people. As Burning Man grows, it attracts an ever more diverse crowd. Subcultures form in a theme around the Black Rock City, similar to what it is, can be found in other cities. Oh, one of my students just texted me on Remind. What do you want? Oh, that's not them. It's me sending out their scheduled message. So they are super dependent on volunteers. It is patrolled by various local and state law enforcement agencies and the Bureau of Land Management. Local police issue $1,500 fines for drug use or serving alcohol to minors. People bring their kids, which is insane. Um, and Burning Man also has its own in-house group of volunteers known as the Black Rock Rangers who act as informal mediators when disputes arise. They also have firefighting, EMS, mental health, communications. All of this is done by the volunteer Black Rock City Emergency Services Department. So they have little stations set up around the city. They have physicians, they have nurses, and they are working with a contracted state licensed medical provider. Um, they also have ESD personnel, they have paramedics, they have firefighters, like I already said that. And in documents from February, um, Ooh, my phone is going nuts. In documents from February 2013 that were first made public in August 2015, it was revealed that in August 2010, the Federal Bureau of Investigation had sent a message to its field offices in Nevada stating that they would patrol Burning Man to aid in the prevention of terrorist activities and intelligence collection. Although a threat assessment performed by the FD FBI determined that drug usage and crowd control were the only threats to Burning Man, they still sent un undercover agents to the event with no adverse threats or reaction. Why the hell did they send undercover FBI agents to Burning Man? They just wanted to go there. No, they literally what that is. They just wanted to go without me. <laughs> You're probably right. I didn't even think about that. They just wanted to burn, bro. They're just burners that didn't have the money this year. I don't understand what the FBI is doing here. This also got cut off. I can't remember what it said. Just like jump scare of the FBI. Oh, we already had this slide. So the temple. The temple is a secondary major art installation that occurs every year. So they build a different temple every year. And it is a community shared space that's an important part of Black Rock City. It is not a religious thing. It's a neutral, non-denominational, spiritual space where everyone can gather to share in their experience of remembering the past, honoring or cursing the present, and pondering the future to become. No religion, just vibes. The prime function of the temple is to be a canvas in which people can leave words and objects to, behind to be burned. Oh, this is what I was thinking of. They put it on the temple, not on the man. So they can leave words and objects behind to be burned and to serve as a place of contemplation, a place to rest, a place of reflection, a place of rituals, weddings, reunions, etc. During the event, 400 volunteer temple guardians monitor the temple 24 hours a day, and the temple is burned on the eighth and final night of the festival following the man burn on the previous night. They just love burning stuff. So here's some temples. This is actually really cool. A lot of this art is really, really pretty to me. And I think it's like cool that they do this every year just to burn it down. I don't know. I think humans are kind of fun and interesting. So this is the temple from 2001. I don't have every year. Here's 2004. So you can see it's like a very large place that you can go up and inside and it's like a whole thing. Here's from 2008. Hey babe, want to get married at Burning Man? Do tax dollars pay for the FBI? Yes, that is your tax dollars at work, the FBI at Burning Man. Um, wait, maybe they did have to get tickets because they were undercover, but the FBI paid for them, I guess. But anyway, these are amazing, right? Like, they're actually really beautiful. We're going to look at a lot of cool art in a second. Um, here's 2010. You can see there's a guy standing there. It's really a huge thing. Here is 2011. Here's 2013, this kind of pyramid vibe. Uh, 2014 is gorgeous. Look at the lights and the bridge. Like, this is really just, like, super, super beautiful. Like, I get it. I get why people go. I wouldn't go because I wouldn't want to be dirty, but I get it. And then 2015, again, huge, gorgeous, we love. And then 2016 is ridiculous. This literally looks like a permanent structure. I would honestly rather my taxes go to the FBI doing shrooms than the military. 
And that is your God-given American right. So the art of Burning Man, the hallmark of Burning Man is the large interactive art. And many works of art are illuminated by fire or LEDs, but they did say you're only allowed to burn stuff on the designated burning platform. So there's music performance art, guerrilla theater, like there's just anything you can think of, the art hippie things, they're doing it. Um, I was going to read all this, but it's like, it seems kind of unnecessary. I'd rather just look at the art. There's a little bit that's important here. So they get funding for some of the art with grants and things like that. And then various different people like in art groups together will go and make their things. Uh, the funding has fostered artistic communities, most notably in the Bay Area of California, the region that has historically provided the majority of the events participants. So I guess a lot of the art comes from like Bay Area artists and various art groups that come together. So let's look at some of the art because that's the fun part. I am not understanding, like, how do they get all of this out here? This seems like just such a big undertaking to get it all out here. So there's this thing. A lot of the art is also vehicles, too. They have these mutant vehicles, which we'll talk about in a second. This is gorgeous. Look at these lights and the, like, the sky. Like, it's a really cool place. Oh, I skipped one. This one you've probably seen. This was famous, and it was, like, all over social media. Um, it's giving Megan stop. I really like this one. This one I think is very pretty. The the jellyfish. This one's cool too, with like the skull coming out of the earth, the hands. That's not Burning Man art. That's someone's backyard. Nice try, Google Images. I think we might have already looked at that. That might be one of the temples. Um, here is more Burning Man art. Again, this is a truck they turned into like a scorpion. This is gorgeous as well. This is one of my favorites, like with the sunset. I don't know if this is like beads or fabric or what, but I don't know. It's just really cool that humans are out in the desert doing their art stuff together. Here's this thing, very abstract, more men's sculpture in the desert, more things. See, stuff is on fire. I guess it just, you're not allowed to burn it, but it can be on fire. Here's more Burning Man art and more and more art. Very cool. I think we already saw that go. Here's like outfit art and sculptures. And then here's a bunch of people. So just how we were saying, like, there's the villages and the communities. There's, like, big groups of people that, like, every year they do Burning Man. Also, for the people on TikTok, you have to come to Twitch to see the slides. Sorry, friend. Um, imagine trying to explain this to a pilgrim. Stop. I could never explain this to a pilgrim. Their mind would explode. So here is some of the outfits and the fashion. You can see it is like quite the vibes that they have going on. People really wear whatever. It's a lot of nudity, a lot going on with that. I've also seen a lot of white people with dreadlocks and box braids at Burning Man. So I'm going to need you to cut that shit out expeditiously. Um, some more people at Burning Man. I don't know why these look like so AI-esque. This is like, this is what men wear to the Met Gala when there's like a bomb theme and they show up in a suit. That's how I feel this is. Like, look at how hard she's serving and then look at him. Terrible. They look fake. Maybe it's like the lighting of the desert or something, but I don't know. My friends got to go last year for free. They're part of a local native tribe. They accompanied an elder tribe member who blessed the temple. Oh, that is cool. That is very cool. It looks like AI because the Silicon Valley bros changed the AI. She's Barbie and he's just Ken. A desert? It's like the beach, but everywhere. <laughs> oh, the poor pilgrims. Again, the women are literally just serving. Like, look at that. That is gorgeous. And then the wings. Imagine that in the wind and the desert. Like, I get it. I literally get it. You guys, we should go. More outfits. More, like, look at this. That is incredible. But, like... How do you serve with no mirror and no bathroom? Like, that's where you're losing me. How do you serve under these conditions? They're eating. That's good. So they also have mutant vehicles. Mutant vehicles are purpose-built or creatively altered motorized vehicles. And this was coined by the Burning Man organizer um, to delineate a type of art car that was more dramatically modified than simply decorating an existing vehicle. So Burning Man participants who wish to bring a motorized vehicle must submit their designs in advance to the DMV, Department of Mutant Vehicles. That's hilarious. That is so funny. The braids are to protect your hair because it's crazy in the sand and all that, but I totally agree. There's a line between protective style and appropriation, but gagging hair done is a big thing that because I could get you, but the getting your hair done is a big thing because I could get you ruined. Well, that's what I'm saying is like, so this is my logic. 
is like protective hairstyles differ by hair type. Like I have white person hair. So a protective hairstyle for me would be like Dutch braids, you know? Like I've seen a lot of people doing box braids and getting hair sewn in. That's not protective if you're white, you know? You know like, is that clicking for anybody else? Um, so Burning Man participants have to send their application to the Department of Mutant Vehicles, and it has to meet the mutant vehicle criteria for the event for a final physical inspection and licensing at the event, and not all designs and proposals are accepted. Um, and the bar is set very, very high. These are very, very interesting. For example, if a 67 VW van is covered with glitter, doll's head, and old-looking utensils, it would still be recognized as the VW van, and it would be an art car, not a mutant vehicle. So you have to really be like, fucking shit up for it to be a mutant vehicle and not just artsy so there were 600 approved mutant vehicles in 2010 apparently i can imagine that's only gone up a lot of them are really 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 cool so people will take like old trucks or old rvs or new ones or people will just like like rich people like hire someone to build all of this like it's kind of just a cool thing that's what, like this is a hater stream, but it's also not a hater stream because some aspects of this I think are really cool. Yeah, they're like parade floats. That's a good way to describe it. So you can see this is cool. They have like this giant trumpet. And then here's one. It's like a little dragon. You can see it's not cars. Like these are not cars in any way. And they can only go again. They can only go up to five miles an hour to keep everybody safe. Um, that's cool. It's a shark. Here's a thing. These So many of these look like AI to me. Like they, I promise they're not. I think we already looked at this picture, but it breathes fire. This is fun. It's like a little golf cart that they made into a unicorn. And again, like they've really, really changed it. This goes going beyond decor. Here's a car that's on a tr like a tractor dirt thing. Uh, this is cool. It's a freaking pirate ship. So this is literally like the like parade float style, a pirate ship. Um, was that on the designated burn platform? I think your thing can admit fire. It just can't burn down and like engulf itself is what I'm kind of gathering from this. It's giving Star Wars. Here's a car that looks like a little fish. That's fun. And then here's another thing that breathes fire, this dragon. So a lot of these are like really freaking cool. I told you guys this is interesting. And most people get around on bikes. So mountain bikes are usually preferred because it's very um, dry, like we said. Um, and participants often decorate their bikes. Because imagine you got 70,000 people on bikes. You need to be able to find yours. Since lighting on bikes is really important, many people use lighting in the decorations with like a luminescent wire and things like that. And so it's like super artsy. We can look at some of the bikes. You can see there's literally a shit ton of bikes. Like there's bikes everywhere. People decorate them, like we said. Um, here's people riding the bikes on the street. Again, tons of bikes literally everywhere. And the bikes are sick, I fear. No, like from a city planning perspective, I love this. Like it's very walking and bike based. The vehicles are intentional and really cool and like bringing value and not everyone has them. A ton get left there every year too. Oh, I bet because I bet what a lot of people do is fly in, buy a bike in Reno, take it there and leave it there. Oh, people are such dicks bikes bikes this guy has a tall seat that's kind of fun and they'll do like big mass bike rides so there'll be like huge groups of people riding you can see some naked people riding bikes people left their cars there this year oh we're going to talk about this year trust big groups of people all on bikes in the desert together you can see they do it at night with all these lights that guy has a skateboard they have like oh, scooters too i guess um more bikes 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 it looks fun just to be in the desert in a tutu and a bikini covered in sand. That's not bikes, but that's people. More bikes. Warning for nudity. Sorry about that. This is fun. That is so kind. I'll say that. I love that. The flamingo bike. That is so fun. Yes, they do have volunteers. Remember they said they have people from like Publix work that are there for weeks before and weeks after. This does not go up overnight and does not get taken down overnight. Um, this is cool. It's like stained glass, which is a vibe. And then here's another bike that they have fuzzies on. I'm sure this was disgusting by the end of Burning Man, I would imagine. 
So this is a Burning Man. This is from Burning Man 2016. Someone flew a drone. So I just wanted us to kind of like see the vibes and what's going on. I have not watched this in advance. So sorry if it's weird. A cow ran into your car at Duncan? What? See all these people on bikes, they have all the RVs, there's like trailers around. Remember when drones were a big thing before we realized there was a safety risk? All that octopus is fun. I just like weird things. So I'm very into this. It's literally adult summer camp. People with kids there is like always going to be baffling to me. Earth. This is such like a Bay Area Silicon Valley bro type of thing. Oh, we looked at that art. Imagine how dark it is at night. I guess because there's so many lights everywhere, but back in the early days, like in the 80s, it was probably really scary at night. So I can't break my dog to Burning Man, but I can break a child precisely. Precisely. Look how dusty it is though. Like this is comfortable. I just can't imagine it. See? Like that, that is so scary. That's literally the dust bowl. Oh, that's a cool bike. The vibes are there though. When it's not flinging dust, it does look really cool. I don't know, I think this is a fun, cool time. I think it's really weird and some of the people are really annoying, but I get it. I bet the stars actually lit the night back in the early days. Oh, you're probably right. Yeah, look at all the lights at night. That is pretty. Oh, dang it. I was talking shit, but this looks so cool. I almost want to go if I had a way to shower without the vinegar. Exactly. It's like as soon as I want to go... It's like, I remember the dust and I'm like, never mind. But you can see what I mean. This is why I wanted to do this stream about this because it's really just like an interesting thing that like, it has a lot of really cool aspects to it. And it has a lot of really stupid aspects to it. Art is very cool. I love art. The dust is making the lights look cool though. It is. The dust is all alkaline salt too, so if you actually want to remove it, you have to use acid like vinegar to get it off. Nightmare fuel. Nightmare fuel. But imagine how good your first shower post Burning Man is. Like imagine you get home, you get in the shower. Oh my god. Imagine the people at the airport post Burning Man. Oh my god. Oh, it probably smells so bad. I would stay in a hotel. I could you could not go straight from Burning Man to the airport. That's out of pocket. Absolutely not. But that first shower probably hits. They clog all the pool filters in Reno. Of course they do. Home, earth. You should, they should have a game show where you have to find your gate in a post-Burning Man airport. But yeah, I wanted you to see the drone footage because it actually is kind of a cool event. So now to criticism. It's hater time. We've kind of been hating on and off. 
So negative effects on the environment. Burning Man's carbon footprint um, is primarily the transportation to get to the remote area. The Cooling Man organization, which Wikipedia said that this apparently needs clarification, so I wanted to leave that in there, has estimated that the 2006 Burning Man was responsible for the generation of 27,000 tons of carbon dioxide, 87% of it being transportation to and from the location. And in 2010, the Sierra Club criticized Burning Man for the hundreds of thousands of plastic water bottles that end up in landfills, as well as the ostentatious displays of flames and explosions. Their 2007 theme, Green Man, received criticism for the artwork Crude Awakening, a 99-foot oil derrick that consumed 900, 900 gallons of jet fuel and 2,000 gallons of liquid propane to blast a mushroom cloud 300 feet into the sky. I need to see this. I need to see this. Burning Man. Oh, this is literally just a video of fireworks. That's annoying. Is there a pick? Oh, wait. I think this is what we're looking for. There we go. Let's, let's run that back. That cannot be good for the environment. Holy shit. No wonder people were mad. <coughs> In an attempt to offset some of the carbon footprint, they added solar rays in 2007, and the Burn Clean Project is a volunteer organization that has helped replace the use of fossil fuels with biodiesel. And in 2023, a group of climate change activists blocked the road, which we will talk about more later. So they are not great on the environment. They also have photography restrictions. Um, the terms of Burning Man ticket require that participants wishing to use photo and video recording equipment share joint copyright of their images with Black Rock City, which forbids them for using their images for the commercial purposes. I love that. This is a criticism, but I love that. You should not be able to sell pictures of other people that came here to have a good time and pictures of other people's art. That's so fair to me. You should not be able to sell that stuff. You should be able to take the pictures and enjoy it, but I think it's fair that the organization owns the pictures too and that you're not allowed to use it for commercial purposes. Because if it's your art, you can take pictures of it somewhere else and sell that. And if it's not your art, you shouldn't be making money off of it. So this has been criticized by people who make money off selling other people's art. And the amount of casual nudity at the event has also decreased over the years because of cameras and stuff. That's one thing that sucks about phones is people don't feel comfortable doing that now, which I think is unfortunate because if you want to be in the desert and do that, you should rock on. Um, so yeah, people are upset about the camera thing, but I think it's literally totally fine. Um, I like that. So this is a big thing a lot of people are upset about is gentrification of Burning Man. Burning Man has attracted a number of billionaires and celebrities from Silicon Valley. And Elon Musk once stated that Burning Man is Silicon Valley. And these billionaires pay for very luxurious camps. These are termed plug and play or turnkey camps. So they have super fancy RVs, luxury restroom trailers. They have little gated areas. The billionaires fly into the airport and then get driven to their camp and serve by hired help, nicknamed their Sherpas, and they sleep in air-conditioned rooms. And one venture capitalist threw a $16,000 per head party at his camp. $16,000 per person. And Google employees shipped a box of lobsters in for a meal. Despite allowing Rich to participate in Burning Man per the radical inclusion principle, many traditional attendees have spoken out against their exclusive practices. Larry Harvey wrote that they conflict with radical self-reliance and other principles that he said were permitted. But he has also said that permitting the wealthy to attend is beneficial to Burning Man. So they're like, motherfucker, radical self-reliance is not when you hire someone to cater after you. Um, and vandalism that occurred at the White Ocean Sound Camp in 2016 was said to be a revolution against these attendees, describing them as a parasite class or a rich parasites. I want to see the vandalation, vandalism. 
Mandalism. No, oh, it doesn't really have pictures of it. Lame. Okay, so meanwhile, the regular admission price has also increased over the years, and Nevada lawmakers have modified the state's entertainment and sales tax code to include nonprofit organizations like Burning Man that sell more than 15,000 tickets. They were an LLC, and then they switched back to a nonprofit. Um, or they were never a nonprofit before. They became an LLC, and then they switched to a nonprofit. As a result, the individual tickets were four hundred and twenty-four dollars in twenty sixteen. I think now they're closer to five hundred. Um, even tickets sold under Burning Man's low income program are subject to these taxes. So the taxes, I guess, make it really expensive because Nevada. This is the biggest event in Nevada. They're gonna make their fucking money off of it. You know what I mean? So including transportation, food, camp fees, clothing, costumes, and gifts, CNBC estimates that the 2016 total of attending would be anywhere from $1,300 to $20,000, and Money Magazine estimated that the average total cost to attend is $2,300. Um, so according to the racial makeup of Burning Man attendees in 2014, 87% of them are white. This is a super, 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 super white event. Um, and then when interviewed by The Guardian about these figures, Harvey replied, this is like... I don't know what this interview expected him to say, but it's probably not this. And again, this is Harvey's words, not mine, not my words. This is a quote. He said, I don't think black folks like to camp as much as white folks. We're not going to set racial quotas. This has never been imagined by us as a utopian society. They probably thought that he was going to say something like super politically correct and he really just said okay so what do you want me to do about that like <laughs> i guess i like i praise the honesty like i'd rather you be yourself and tell me how you really feel than lie i guess than give some like fake bullshit pc statement but i don't think anyone expected him to say that um do, 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 do. Well, there has been criticism that Burning Man has jumped the shark. What the fuck does that mean? This proposition was criticized by an anthropologist who said that Burning Man was never a utopia in the first place. And even though they're kind of giving utopia vibes, they never outright said that, I guess. So while most people at Burning Man stay in RVs, yurts, and tents, this is kind of like a typical Burning Man setup. Some people have like regular RVs. Some people have these tents. It's just kind of like a different vibe. You can see a lot of people sleep in like literally regular large tents. They'll set up tables. They have hammocks, stuff like that. This is like a typical bathroom style, communal, outdoor restroom. Not really like, like that's a bucket for you. Just FYI. Um, Here's again more restrooms, porta potties, things like that. Um, outside, they have these giant chessboards. This is kind of like a typical Burning Man experience. You can see there's tents, there's people covered in dust, all of that. This is one of the fancy camps at Burning Man. So I bet those bathrooms get sick. Nah, for real. So here's one of the fancy camps. They even have a check in desk, a ceramic fountain. And then they also have chandeliers and they have rugs all around. And apparently there's no dust. They have people cleaning it and these like big ass thick walls. So I guess the dust can't get in. Um, and you even entered through a four year area and they ate food prepared by a chef in a truck that was devoted to cooking. The food was buffet style and they also had a black tie dinner with whole pigs and lobsters. Rich people cosplaying being poor. Like, literally, what is this? This is just your... Yeah, exactly. What's the point? What is the point if you're just going to do that? So... The 2019 held a major metamorphosis for Black Rock City. Burning Man Project CEO started that they were having a clarion call for change, highlighting the efforts to address the erosion of key principles like decommodification, radical self-reliance, and participation in our desert home. So I guess the founders are now annoyed that 
people are doing this and they're like, stop with your bullshit. Stop with your rich people bullshit. These efforts include calls for community help to stop the creep of Instagram culture and the promotion of products on the playa from the big and splashy to the smaller festival wear business brigade. These communications worked hand in hand with the third year of the cross departmental initiative project citizenship, which focused on decommodification, radical inclusion and exclusivity and greening your burn. I thought they weren't exclusive. See, they can't even keep it straight themselves. Um, so yeah, they started to kind of have this like anti Instagram culture. Also, I just want to show you their website because it's really very, very cool. So I love a good website. So I just really wanted to show you this. I'll let you play with it too. And we're going to talk about more stuff, but I wanted to show you like the timeline I got stuff from. This is where I was getting it. So it has every year, like I already showed you, you can scroll and see the number of attendees and how big the Burning Man is. And when you click on each year, it has photos and like a little passage and it has an afterburn report and there's an event archive. They have the survival guide of every year. Like I just really, 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 really appreciate how organized these people are. And I think it goes to show like this is a community that really does like value keeping like I don't want to say keeping records, but like they value the experience. So they want to look back on it. You know what I mean? I just know everyone who attends this is also a NIMBY. No, they totally are. NIMBY is not in my backyard, which is people that are like, yeah, I want to help the homeless, but I don't want to see them. Like that kind of like you, you say one thing, but then as soon as you're near it, you like do the opposite is what NIMBY really means. Um, so yeah, every year you can click on and like see facts about that year and the theme and the number of people that were there and the new, they have like maps and the art installations. It's just like a really good website and I really value that. And I think that like something that is kind of like sad to me is that like our internet is getting so unreadable and getting to access information is really hard. And like things like Wikipedia are like kind of, I don't want to say under attack, but like they're just not valued. And the internet is such like a money hungry place that just the organized and accessible information is not something we see that often. And I just really, really, really liked this website. And I feel like this is a really good example for how you can like show that you care about something. Like it's important enough to the people that do this event to organize it and keep track of it and be able to view it over time. And I think that that's just really cool. And I think that when we think about like, history people always say like oh how are we going to be written in the history books like this is the history books so like if your group your passion your organization isn't creating good stuff like this where people can learn from it and see it people are going to forget about you you know so i just wanted to shout out to their great fucking website which was very helpful in planning this um so the protesters of the 2023 burning man Burning Man attendees roadblocked by climate change activists. They have a privileged mindset. The road into Burning Man is a rural two lane highway winding through Northwest Nevada. Approximately 80,000 people make this pilgrimage every year, hauling trailers and RVs across the scorching desert. Um, this year, climate activists temporarily halted the influx of eager festival goers blocking the road with a 28 foot trailer, causing bumper to bumper traffic jam for over an hour. They clashed with outraged Burning Man attendees as well as the Nevada Rangers. In recent years, Burning Man has adrifted from its hippie roots and become better known for luxury RVs, wild orgies, Silicon Valley bros. Protesters from the Seven Circles, which is a collection of activists representing climate groups, Extinction Rebellion, Rave Revolution, Scientist Rebellion, demanded that Burning Man ban private jets and single-use plastics, as well as unlimited generator and propane use. Signs painted with the slogans, Burners of the World Unite, Mother Earth Needs Our Help, and System Change were erected around the blockade while four activists chained themselves to a trailer and locked arms through PVC pipes. So here's some pics, protesters clashing with attendees. Um, activists had driven to the site they chose for the action in separate vehicles, stopping on the road while the driver of the trailer pulled ahead and turned to block both lanes. People in the cars stuck up behind them initially believed there'd been an accident. And when they emerged from their vehicles asking if everyone was okay, sc protesters scrambled to get their signs and flags up amid the confusion. This is literally like South Park. And when onlookers realized it was a climate protest, many became 
um, quickly incensed, having back to their cars, frustrated at the inconvenience. <laughs> they're delusional. It's idiot. It's idiocy. Fumed Molly, a festival attendee. They think they're going to fix climate change by blocking Burning Man. I don't care what their argument is. They can go fuck themselves. That is really not in the spirit of Burning Man, Molly. Um, Emily Collins, another co-founder of Rave Revolution, added that the tech utopianism woven into the Burning Man culture has in gendered a sense of complacency among many of its attendees. There's a lot of people thinking, oh, I'm a vegan, I drive an electric car, I'm working in sustainability. I'm very technocratic, it's a privileged mindset. This is a lit, like, people are just arguing. No one's accomplishing anything. Um, so yeah, basically they're protesting over that. I don't feel like reading the rest of their details. Emily is so right. Emily is right, but also like, what did you think this was going to accomplish? So within minutes of the blockade going up, several people called the police to report the protesters. This is so like not what I would expect from the Burning Man people. I'm surprised it didn't turn into like a group protest, but I guess they've really lost their, uh, what is this? I guess they've really lost their way from their norms. Um, so then other people getting interviewed are trying to like kind of cover their ass. They're like, I have solar panels on my RV. The protesters drove here in gas powered cars. They're making the climate worse. So they're fucking playing the blame game. And the protesters had the high moral ground, but the protest did not go well. After an hour long standoff, trucks from the Pyramid Lake Ranger Station, a tribal law enforcement agency showed up and drove through their barricade. And the officer who destroyed the barricade yelled over a loud speaker i'm gonna take all of you out you better move before exiting the vehicle drawing his weapon and then handcuffing protesters who said they were not armed and one protester was left with a bleeding head but was not deeply injured um after all that was done burning man attendees also known as burners got back in their cars and headed for the festival gate so about an hour long standoff let me show you this video from this which is on twitter and this is so funny to me, like, the fact that it still says Twitter down here, worst rollout ever. But anyway, so Nevada Rangers drove directly into the blockade set up by climate protesters. Please just watch. This is wild. A whole hour. This is wild. I feel like they're moving kind of slow for having like a taser held up to them. So I guess she's the one that got injured, I would guess. And then it was literally a natural disaster. This is a bad omen. The way they turned around and came for attempt to. We're environmental protesters. The police do not care. Sweetie, the police do not care. I feel like they're being a little bit dramatic. The police and the protesters. Like, I think everyone's being a little bit dramatic, I'm going to be honest. He definitely would have hit them if so many people weren't around. Absolutely would have hit them if so many people weren't around. So let's discuss uh, the mud of 2023. So Burning Man this year was a shit show. If you don't know, I want to watch some news clips from it. This is from the national. I think this is, uh, oh, it's Canadian. I was about to say British. A filthy, muddy mess. Torrential rains hit Nevada's remote Black Rock Desert during the annual Burning Man Festival. As many as 70,000 people stranded. It was in the forecast, so we knew it was coming. But you never know how bad it's going to be until it happens. Definitely something something will go down in the history book. Burning Man organizers say the event is about radical self-reliance. It draws artists, celebrities, and influencers. A temporary city is built in the dry, dusty desert chosen for its harsh conditions. Now, though, it's transformed into thick sludge. Even though you do think of that just kind of being dry, dusty area, um, we do get rain up there, but it was just the amount of rain that occurred during that period that was pretty abnormal. The area got two to three months worth of rain in just 24 hours. I had multiple problems of it on my feet. I've been to Burning Man 13 times since uh, 2002, 
and I've only seen rain for a few minutes. Here it was multiple hours. While no vehicles are allowed to leave the site, some have attempted it anyway. Most, though, are sheltering in place. Organizers say they have enough food and water, but are asking people to ration their supplies. The local sheriff's office is investigating a death at the festival, but won't say if it's weather related. Uh, the death was someone who uh, unfortunately overdosed on a few substances, which I looked up, but I, it didn't feel helpful or relevant to the stream, so I didn't really include anything about it. So rest in peace to that person. As the rain fell, some decided to make the kilometers long trek to the highway on foot, hoping for a lift like the DJ Diplo, who chronicled his journey alongside comedian Chris Rock. Right they managed to hitch a ride out on the back of a pickup truck. Others, though, are making the best of a bad situation. It's a survival event. Like, you come out here to be in a harsh climate, and you prepare for that. So in many ways, everybody here just kind of made friends with their neighbors. It's a community event. Sarah officials say the desert needs to dry before people can leave, but presumably that, that's going to take some time. Yeah, and you know what? More rain is in the forecast. Not quite like festival goers saw Friday into Saturday, but enough to slow down any drying of the ground. Uh, U.S. President Joe Biden was briefed on the situation and, and his... What the fuck is Joe Biden going to do? Joe Biden doesn't care. So, literally exactly what I would expect. It was an unusual turn of events that tested the resolve of the participants who were told to conserve food and water at the more than three decades old festival. True to form, they were taking it with stride. Burning Man is an all weather state of mind, said Star Heartstrong. There is no way your parents named you that. This is a tech entrepreneur from Austin, Texas. He added, when it's time to leave, we'll leave. Burners aren't victims. All right, man. What the fuck ever, I guess. Motor is actually pretty awful. You still need acid to remove it because it's alkaline. And since the festival had dried up on the mud sea, but it can go multiple feet deep. Ugh. Ugh. Why the freak did Chris rock? So not only did it suck to be there, think about what the surrounding area is. You're, you cannot drive through mud. So being able to get everyone out seems awful the exodus underway that sunshine you see is the savior drying the mud just enough for tires to grip not sink into sludge it was impossible to function impossible to move around a lot of struggling people and what became very cold very storm-like conditions people's tents and entire camps became pretty much destroyed more than seventy thousand people were basically trapped for days this is a shit show. <laughs> Water man. Trapped in this makeshift desert city that pops up in Nevada every year around Labor Day, filled with campers and creators, fun lovers, and those with their freak flags flying. That culminates in the man burning. We planned on leaving right after the burn, which is Saturday night, um, and then it started raining on us. Everybody took their shoes off, started dancing in the mud. It was great, and then the reality sunk in that. We couldn't leave. Chris Rock and some other celebs decided to take the only uncomfortable exit available. Yeah, New York Knicks jacket on, and we just, he just got up with us and started walking. And we walked about three hours in the mud, and um, he was happy with me. I think Cindy Crawford walked with us, Kyra Gruber, Good Austin job. Butler. Um, it was a challenge, but it, that was honestly one of the highlights of the whole trip. Thousands of others stuck it out, many embracing the ethos of self-reliance that surrounds this festival. I was waiting for the looting, honestly. I thought that would have been great. But, uh, <laughs> nah, like, it's really beautiful, actually, when you go into the camps. Everybody was helping each other out. Burning man. Raining man. Suck it up. Stick it out. I have my RV here, and all the uh, my other camp People got stuck for RVs a few days. Are big rental trucks or, or things like that and, and it took them a few weeks to clean it up but they did clean it up. i mean sure you could have walked out but what am i gonna do with all my stuff all this chaos caused by less than an inch of rain even just the slightest bit of rain makes everything super slick you walk around your feet you have like five pounds of mud on your feet why well this is a desert nothing much grows so the soil isn't lovely loamy and absorbent it's just miles of gray clay most years this is a dusty not a muddy mess and under an inch of rain well that's still two or three months worth of rain in this arid land within just 24 hours tonight they will finally burn the man for those that remain and pray for double no rainbow 
And then here is them actually leaving. It took a couple days to get everybody out, but they did get everybody out. And, and the mass too, too exodus long. from Burning Man is slowly moving forward after rain and mud trapped more than 70,000 festival goers for days. For now, there's new it's almost like a dry lake during a climate change crisis is not the best place to party. Shocking, I know. The concern over what they're leaving behind. Our Liz Kreutz is there. At Burning Man's Black Rock City, days trapped in messy sludge have now turned to hours stuck in gridlock traffic. It was a great burn until it rained. Tonight, the slow crawl out of the burn. remote desert festival stretching for miles. Tens of thousands still trying to get out. This is where festival goers finally reach a paved road, but getting here is a lesson in patience. For some, the six mile trip out taking as long as nine hours. Oh, God. And now questions are mounting over the chaotic mess left behind. The Pershing County Sheriff slamming the conduct of festival goers, telling the San Francisco Chronicle some abandoned their property and vehicles, leaving trash across several miles as they scrambled to escape the store. There have been people that have left things. I think a lot of people had a very fear based reaction. Organizers have. I think a lot of people had a really fear based reaction. Well, when you're stuck in a muddy desert, that I think is a natural response. But again, we should have never been there. I'm the biggest proponent. If you cannot live there, we're not supposed to be there. The bottom of the ocean, we die if we go down there. So we're not supposed to be there. Space, we can't breathe up there. We're not supposed to be there. Like anywhere that your body can't function, you don't need to be there. That's nature telling you that that is not for you. Have not responded to NBC's request for comment about the aftermath, but veteran festival goers like <laughs> Terry Galt, who's staying behind to clean up, are frustrated. We know that people abandoned their camps, so it's not surprising to hear that there was trash left behind. What's your message to people who leave things behind? Well, one of the 10 principles is leave no trace. So for those people who left trash behind, those aren't real burners. They probably shouldn't be out here anyway. This all Terry. comes as authorities continue to investigate the death of a man at the height of the storm. Authorities say there's no indication it was weather related, but that conditions may have slowed their response. While well, most today are going out by car, some finding ways to avoid the congestion. With the bike was just uh, well, 30 minutes. Tonight, with half the festival still inside, the famous Burning Man is gone, but a massive cleanup effort still lies ahead. Liz Kreutz, NBC News, Black Rock Desert. And they did manage to clean it up. It normally takes about a month, and apparently they, they did clean it up according to the internet. I'm sure other people have different opinions about that. But let me actually, I'm going to make this poll on Twitch. Instead, what do you guys want to learn about next week? We one second. Let me make a poll. Next week, we work Starbucks. I'll do it for two minutes. Okay, so next week, ooh, Salem Witch Stream is a good idea. Anyway, next week, do you guys want to learn about WeWork? If you don't know what WeWork is, it's basically you would pay a membership and it was like a co-working space, but it was actually a really odd cult. Uh, the company was and the employees were going through a lot and the founder is very crazy and very, very weird. Your other option is Starbucks. For those of you that don't know, Starbucks makes a lot of its money because it holds your money in their little app. Uh, that is their primary endeavor, not the coffee shop. It's their app, which is disturbing. And Starbucks has done a lot of things, historically speaking. So, ooh, this is really in the moment. Have you seen in Broad, Broad City She Work episode? That is one of my favorite Broad City episodes. Starbucks union busting too? Yes. It'll just kind of be like all about Starbucks in general, not just the app. As an ex-employee, I want to see how scummy Starbucks is. The Starbucks union busting stuff is so bad. All right, I'm seeing a lot more people vote for Starbucks. I was going to vote VWork, but now I'm intrigued by Starbucks. I'll probably do both of them at some point. Oh, a Tanacon stream? Oh, we should do a Tanacon stream. Vote in the poll. Starbucks is winning. What is my boyfriend watching?
I can like hear someone singing. Oh, I bet it's a football game. I had no idea that they were a cult. They treated their employees crazy and had really insane parties where a lot of really not chill stuff happened. TanaCon was like, so Tana Mojo is like an influencer YouTuber and she tried to have like a convention and it went terribly, terribly, terribly. Chiefs game, probably Taylor singing stuff. Starbucks for sure. Starbucks is winning so far and I think the poll is about to end. Yep. Starbucks is the winner. So next week we're learning about Starbucks. Here are the sources from today. There were a lot of them. Uh, and then I think this is the game. So let me put it in the chat. Okay, give me one second. We're gonna do Halloween. 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 We're doing Halloween. I don't care that it doesn't match the theme. So I just put the directions in the chat. You can do this on your phone. You can do this in a new tab. You can do this wherever. Go to join.nearpod.com and then you enter the code. Whatever you put in as your name will come up on here. So do something funny. Don't dox yourself unless you feel like it. Then you can. It's up to you. Um, but go ahead and join. You get to pick a little character person and it's a trivia game about what we just talked about. It's, uh, 10 questions about burning man. And again, if anyone didn't know, merch is here. The computer fund has been completed. Oh, uh, the Nearpod code, it is H K E six Z. So Merch is here. The computer fund has been completed. The computer has been ordered. It'll be here in two weeks or three weeks, depending on if the Apple gods like me. Yeah, lots of exciting stuff happening right now. This theme is cute. Can we do it for all of October? Absolutely we can. Let me put the directions in the chat again. You don't have to make an account. I'm not asking for your email address. It's just a fun game for us all to play. I'm excited to eat my goldfish after this. Like the crackers, not like a literal goldfish. I'd give you my social. <sighs> Nearpod is down for you. Nearpod has been having like low key a lot of issues lately. I'll give you a couple more seconds to join. Holy shit, there's 51 people here. I made the best banana bread today. I wish I knew how to make banana bread. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. If you haven't joined, it'll let you. I'm sure if I like looked it up, I could make banana bread. I just like haven't done it, I guess. Oh, the normal website has a join section too. Cool. I just paid my rent. Feeling depressed. Did I pay my rent? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Boom. My teeth hurt. I want candy. When was the first burning man? It is spooky music, very fun.
feel like some people have a different definition of cheap to me because I posted on my Instagram story and I was like, what's your favorite place to get cheap posters? And a bunch of people are saying Canva and Canva posters are expensive as shit. That was the first place I looked. How much did tickets originally cost? Oh my God, not Elizabeth Thanos. Did you hear that Elizabeth Holmes and Jen Shaw are becoming friends in prison? Did I not fucking call it? Did I not call it? I just want everyone here to acknowledge that I literally called it and it's exactly happening. I knew it before they knew it. That's a really creepy actually that I knew it before they knew it, but it's true. The original tickets were free. They didn't even have tickets. You just kind of showed up. Where is Burning Man held? Why is literally everyone getting engaged? I think everybody needs to calm down. Everybody just needs to stay nice and calm. I just got engaged too. <laughs> I wasn't talking about you, sorry. Who sent undercover agents to Burning Man? Someone, I'm in a bunch of like A Push Teacher Facebook groups because um, I like to get other people's lessons because I'm too lazy to make my own. And some people really are talking about some very out of pocket things. There's a lot going on in a lot of schools. It's very disturbing. I'm scared. And also, can I just say, I love my new admin. Like, it feels so good to work for people that are, like, rational. Just, like, some rational, normal people. I'm really loving that. Like, today, I went to my vice principal because I, like, kind of having a problem with something. It's, like, not important what it is. But I feel like any other admin I've ever worked for, you go to them with a problem and then they just like make you feel bad for having a problem. And they're like, oh, well you should have done. And it's like, yeah, I know what I should have done. I'm asking you for help now. But today I went to my admin with a problem and like there was like no blame game at all. She just gave me advice and literally was like, I'll deal with it. Like call me in, I'll do it. Like she was so helpful, love her. They do not know about my social media at all. But honestly, the school that I teach at is having a lot of issues, so I really don't think they would care. Like, I think they would be like, oh, she's doing what? Nothing illegal's happening? Great. Like, I really, they have bigger fish to fry. Like, we have a lot of stuff going on. What is the temple? Exactly, an art-based community space. They made it clear it is not a church. It is not a church. What is one way Burning Man tries to protect the environment? It's a hard game. What was the goal at the 2019 Burning Man? Oh, I like this headboard. I'm about to go ape shit buying stuff for my house. <laughs> what was the trash wall? I missed out on that. So it was like, it's like a little fence they put around the camp area so that trash that blows gets stuck in the fence instead of just like blowing into the abyss. It's also like the barrier around where people are not allowed to leave. Well, if you leave it, you're not supposed to come back. Why were people protesting in 2023? Of course, I'm here for the questions. Uh, 
this too are getting this right. Oh, well, I meant the 2023 Burning Man. I mean, all of those are true this year. It was climate change, though. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the TikTok live. Goodbye, TikTok. TTYL. All right. Any memes? Any questions? Any concerns? Oh, my God, I forgot to read off the winners. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to go ahead. Oh, and they don't come back. I'm sorry. Dana the Frog, congratulations on winning. I moved too fast and forgot to read off everyone else. I feel so bad. Chi Town Shorty, second place two weeks in a row. Sexy and Squid, I got the eighth. Nice. When's the Todd Chrisley stream? Probably over Thanksgiving because that's when I'll have time. Unstable Garbage was number three. I feel so bad I forgot to read it off. I feel really bad. I hate this. Oh my god, it was your first stream of Burning Parking Lot. I hope you liked it. I hope it was worth it. And what do we decide next week? Next week's is Starbucks. Me at home, me at Burning Man. My face this entire stream. Did you guys like this topic? Did you think it was interesting? It wasn't as much of a hater vibe as, like, you probably thought it was going to be. But I think it was kind of cool. Sadie Stone, I got fifth. Nice. I completely forgot to make a meme. LOL, here's a spider skeleton. That's fun. I loved it way more than expected. I feel like the art was really cool. Like I genuinely enjoyed researching this. It was like a lot more complicated and involved than I thought. So I felt like also speaking of how I was like in my little depression era, not even depression, just kind of like a low because I like my workout situation that I was talking about at the beginning. I also feel like I got into a lull with streaming. I did so many old topics. School was starting. I got really sick for two weeks. I had to do a couple streams on Tuesday nights because of work events. And I, I just like, I want to get back into my routine with it. And obviously that helps viewership as well. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get the new computer, do some cooler stuff. But yeah, and yeah, I didn't know how cool the art was. There's a lot of really cool aspects of Burning Man. Thanks for us keeping keeping us entertained. You have died at Burning Man. Stop. 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 That's so funny. Alrighty. I hope everybody has a great night. Live, laugh, and love. Tuesdays was just a fluke. It's Wednesdays regular now. Yes, we did Tuesday for two weeks because I had parent-teacher conferences and I had curriculum night and both of them happened to be on Wednesdays, which sucked. So we did Tuesdays for two weeks, but now we are back to Wednesday. Thank you so much for being here. This is the highlight of my week every week. Burning Man organizers when they see a dried up late. I got to figure out how to make money on this thing. So I'm excited for Starbucks next week. I will see you then. TTYL, all the love. Have